Coming up on the AFN Europe Report. The very first Patriot flight brings new arrivals from the States to Germany. We'll explain. He knew this was a guinea pig day, he said, and it seems that it was really flowing pretty smooth. And we talked to a performer from the Cirque Dream Show currently traveling throughout Europe. If my heart's beating this fast, I can only imagine how hard that guy's heart's beating. Plus, a group of young zombies are ready to eat your brain. We've got the ghoulish story. Good evening and welcome to the AFN Europe Report. I'm Sergeant Sean Casey. The military lifestyle can bring on many stressors. Sometimes just talking to someone can help. Chaplains and mental health professionals are always available. And now you can get help right at your fingertips. Two people at Ramstein Air Base put their heads together to come up with a round-the-clock way to get help if you need it. According to a report from dailymail.co.uk, one U.S. veteran attempts suicide every 80 minutes. With numbers this high, Major Curtis DeLoach and Mr. Scott Harris decided there needed to be a crisis management hotline in place as an additional tool for people in need. Anyone in our military community, military members, the family members of the military, as well as the civilians, have available to them this line 24-7, 365. This service is available for anybody who's in need, who's in crisis. There are many stressors that can affect not only service members, but their families. Yes. Things like finances, deployments, and just adapting can take a toll. Time and time again, each individual comes to a point when they are suicidal, where they will basically say to me that they have no value, that, that they don't think that they matter. And when I'm looking at them, I'm seeing this wonderful, generous human being who's given a chunk of their life to their country, and they're telling me they're worthless. The toll-free number 118 from DSN Lines was developed by Major Deloach and Mr. Harris, two people who were hit hard by suicide. I'm aware of somebody, uh, they were 20 years old, um, and they, they could have gotten the help if somebody would have reached out to them, if somebody would have provided them a resource. but. People just didn't pay attention, um, and that person just did it alone, went alone, and uh, you know, eventually they just couldn't take it anymore, and uh, nobody got to them in time. Chaplains and mental health professionals are always available. Now, the crisis management line can be in that list of tools to combat stress. They're going to want to make sure that that person knows they're not alone, that they are being listened to, and that they matter. Operators are trained in grief counseling, and the process is confidential. Air Force Sergeant Joshua Perigen, Ramstein Air Base, Germany. We now continue our coverage from the Munich Security Conference. Air Force Sergeant John Archiquette has this story, where two leaders at the event recognized the necessity of joint training in Europe. For the top leaders of the Munich Security Conference, one of the hot-button issues was the possible reduction of U.S. soldiers stationed in Europe. But as NATO Secretary General Anders Fogh Rasmussen explained in an exclusive interview with AFN, the American presence in Europe is still critical to NATO response forces. It's much more than just about the number uh, of American troops um, in, in Europe. It's also about the way we cooperate. And in that respect, uh, I appreciate uh, very much um, the American decision to uh, provide uh, troops uh, for uh, uh, the NATO response force, uh, which is a rapid reaction force uh, that can be deployed uh, at short notice, but also a, a response force that can constitute a framework uh, for joint exercises uh, between American troops and European troops. And uh, that's an essential element uh, of um, transatlantic uh, cooperation, and that part of it will be strengthened uh, in the coming years. American ambassador to Germany, Philip Murphy, echoed the same sentiments, stressing the positive impact of the readiness of U.S. forces as well. The, so the rationale in today's world to be able to work alongside allies, share each other's moves, understand each other deeply, has hugely positive implications for our national security. Now, I'm not suggesting you couldn't accomplish that by doing that back home, but I, I am convinced by our military brethren that the, because we're so invested in Europe and the proximity is so compelling, 
uh, that we know we can do it in Europe. So it's got to be like everything else in life. We've got to balance uh, those interests. But there is an absolute national security, compelling national security argument to, be, to continue to be invested deeply in Europe. So while the mission may have changed over the past few decades, the importance of having American forces in Europe remains just as strong. Air Force Sergeant John Archiquette, Munich, Germany. After several months of planning and preparation, the first U.S. Patriot Express flight has arrived at Ramstein Air Base, Germany. Army Sergeant Benjamin Bogus shows us how the Ramstein Gateway is welcoming new arrivals. After an exhausting cross-Atlantic flight, more than 120 soldiers and family members arrive at Ramstein Air Base, Germany. The exhausted passengers are grateful to touch down in Germany aboard the new Patriot Express flight. It was spacious for one, like I had plenty of room and then like the flight attendants, they were super nice and timely. You needed something, they were on it, like right there. As the passengers clear customs and grab their luggage, First Human Resource Sustainment Center liaisons and process the new arrivals. Specialist Nicholas Collington is a liaison at the terminal. One of the guys that came up to uh, in process, he said, you know, he knew this was the guinea pig day. He said, and it seems that it was really flowing pretty smooth and that we seemed like we knew what we were doing. He said, so just keep up the good work. So that right there was good enough sign for me from a sergeant first class to let me know that I was doing my job and my team members were. So I feel it was very successful. In less than three hours, passengers start boarding the buses that will take them to their new duty station. For the 21st Theater Sustainment Command, I'm Army Sergeant Benjamin Bogus, Ramstein Air Base, Germany. Stay with us. The Cirque Dreams performers are on tour and coming to a military community near you. We've got highlights from Inserlik Air Base after the break. Welcome back to the AFN Europe Report. Hearts are often associated with Valentine's Day, which falls in mid-February. February is also American Heart Month. We're going to head south of the Alps to Naples, Italy, where Lieutenant Commander Tinsika Riggs tells us how to stay healthy enough to enjoy many more Valentine's Day celebrations in the future. On this edition of Healthy Meal Makeovers, we're going to step inside the commissary to um, celebrate Heart Healthy Month in February. So one of the fundamental things of a heart healthy diet is soluble fiber. And a great place for you to find soluble fiber is in the produce aisle. For instance, these apples and these pears are gonna give you somewhere between three to six grams of soluble fiber. That's great because your goal really is a minimum of 10 grams of soluble fiber a day. Another great source of soluble fiber in your diet are beans. In fact, they're probably the best source of soluble fiber. Um, just a cup of beans is gonna give you up to eight grams of soluble fiber. Another fundamental concept of a heart-healthy diet is a diet rich in monounsaturated fatty acids. And that's gonna include things like olive oil, nuts, canola oil, avocados, so if you can get rid of the saturated fat, like the butter and the lard and ice cream, and replace that with these monounsaturated fatty acids like nuts, you're gonna have a much heart healthier diet. So remember to stock up on fruits, beans, oats, nuts, and those foods rich in omega-3 fatty acids, and you'll be filling your cart for your heart. The Cirque Dreams Jungle Fantasy Tour offers service members a look into the bizarre and beautiful world that helps them escape the daily grind, even if just for a little while. Airman Roman Weber in Aviano, Italy, introduces us to one young woman in the show whose job is a little more similar to the military than you might think. 
The Cirque Dreams Jungle Fantasy Tour is a symphony of dangerous and precisely coordinated acts designed to impress the audience. In order to keep the crowd engaged, each performance must go exactly as planned. Molly is a performer on the show and her acts require extensive preparation and a flawless execution. What I do is an aerial hoop act, this metal hoop that I'm sitting in. I work with another girl and the two of us lift each other up, support each other, do different bendy poses. For the audience, Molly's act is just a portion of the show, but for Molly, it's a full-time job. And with her unique job comes a different kind of lifestyle, which she finds similar to that of a service member. It's a very demanding job. You have to be ready to up and go at a moment's notice whenever the job calls you to go somewhere else. You spend a lot of time away from your family. Along with the hardships of rarely being home, her job is dangerous. But the aspect of danger only makes the show that much more appealing to the crowd. The last act, I was like, my heart was beating and I was like, oh my god. If my heart's beating this fast, I can only imagine how hard that guy's heart's beating. The stage doesn't have any safety nets to keep the performers from falling. The only thing keeping them safe is their preparation. And we all train 24-7. We have to be mentally ready, physically ready to just go out and do our job. Obviously, we don't have to carry guns, but uh, they're, they're pretty similar. This one-hour show is the result of several performers like Molly, spending most of the year away from their family, training for the show, and performing dangerous stunts when they're on stage. Airman First Class Roman Weber, Aviano Air Base, Italy. To see the Cirque Dreams Tour is coming to a community near you, check out the AFN Europe Facebook page. Stay with us. Young zombies have taken over a military community in Kaiserslautern. We'll show you what the ghoulish creatures are up to. That's after the break. The storm can end. Alcoholics Anonymous can help us weather the storm one day at a time. In the darkest days, there is hope. There is Alcoholics Anonymous. If alcohol has become a problem in your life, look us up in the phone book or visit aa.org. Alcoholics Anonymous. We can help. Welcome back to the AFN Europe Report. It's been spreading across the United States like a dangerous outbreak. It's zombie fever, and folks young and old have it. With movies like Shaun of the Dead and Zombieland, The Walking Dead have become stars in modern pop culture. The infection is even spreading across the ocean to one military base in Germany. Airman Nate Gettleman explains. Individuals with an insatiable hunger for brains and rotting flesh lurch their way down to the Vogelway Library to take part in Zombies Heart Your Brains. We had a wide variety of activities, everything from Xbox games to paper-based board games. We had zombie target practice. But what do zombies have to do with the library? For us, it was a great way to bring in a lot of new people into the library and show off the things that we have that maybe they didn't know about. Really, the, the main idea for any kind of special event like this is to make sure that we're getting in people that maybe aren't using our services, so we try to do something that's a little different from the other programs that we offer. While the event was lighthearted in nature, some take the zombie apocalypse a bit more seriously than others. Most families put together kits for hurricanes, for floods, for tornadoes, for fire all kinds of emergencies, but the Brownings, we put together a zombie kit. It's got first aid, it's got water, it's got, you know, any type of thing we think we need, MREs. That's all well and good, but how does one protect themselves? Guns only last as long as your bullets will. I would definitely recommend a good machete. Reporting from Vogelway Military Complex, I'm Airman First Class Nate Gettleman. If you missed a story on tonight's newscast, you can always log on to our website at afneurope.net. 
And while you're there, be sure to stop by our Facebook and Twitter pages. That's all the time we have. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.